Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Later this year, Intel will be releasing its desktop iteration of the Arc GPUs, including what appears to be the A770 flagship. This will feature 32 XC cores and 512 execution units. And there's a very interesting benchmark which has emerged on the internet. Now, we actually see that it has an allocation of 12.7 gigabytes of memory, but don't worry, that's probably incorrect, to put it mildly. We know that the flagship model does actually feature 16 gigabytes of memory, but we also have a clock frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. So this is around 200 megahertz higher than what we've seen with the mobile GPUs in the Arc Free lineup. So, yeah, Intel themselves have actually teased a... Uh, clock frequency of 2250 megahertz for the desktop, although they also put some caveats that, of course, clock frequency will vary. And given the fact that graphics cards can vary their clock frequency based on power, temperature, and various other things, it's not unsurprising. Now, the result here that we're seeing is kind of interesting. I'm going to round scores up and down here for everyone's sanity, but we're looking at a score of 85,500. To put this into some level of context, that's about 40% slower than the RTX 3070 from NVIDIA. And honestly, this is closer to something along the lines of a 3060 or a 3060 Ti. But most of this seems to be down to the drivers still. Now, there's a very interesting uh, kind of video that was posted by Bull's Lab. I'll leave a link to the video in the description, along with the WCCF Tech article. And they were doing some investigation to the Alchemist GPUs for mobile. Long story short, you basically get double the number of frames per second if you disable Intel's dynamic tuning technology. This basically helps shift power between CPU and GPU and, bal and balance things like battery life. It's a whole thing, but yeah, basically frame rates just absolutely tank with it on versus off. And clearly this is a bug in the software. This is not, you know, indicative of what's supposed to happen. So, I'm not sure exactly why this is happening. I don't have an Arc laptop to test, but it's possible that it's simply getting misinformation from the operating system. Perhaps it thinks that it's not plugged into power or whatever reason. And this is kind of what I've been saying for a while now regarding the drivers and software for Arc. Basically, long story short, for those who have missed my previous reports, the silicon now has come along quite a long way. Previously, it was really power hungry and it was quite hot. Apparently, the later revisions of silicon have improved things significantly, but the drivers are still not where they should be. And I've had a couple of people, I don't want to say too much because they're asking me to not say specifics, but I have had numerous people tell me that the drivers are just basically not fit for purpose at this stage when it comes to the desktop iterations with, let's say, hinky things with DirectX 11, DirectX 12, and Vulkan, and OpenCL, and other things. However, of course, these products are not available yet, and I do suspect Intel will fix a lot of this stuff. Ultimately, I'm quite confident Intel will do quite well in the longer term, and obviously they also have sub uh, subsequent architectures too, like Battle Mage. I've actually been hearing that game performance of Battle Mage is going to be around two and a half to three times faster, according to one of my sources, than what we have with Arc Gen 1, but FP32 performance could be up to around four times, maybe even five times faster, although it's quite early, so I wouldn't put huge amounts of faith in those rumors at the moment. I'm trying to get other sources to corroborate this, but yeah, long story short, Intel are definitely going to be in an interesting position when they launch, given, of course, the fact that they're going to be competing against products like RDNA 3 and also uh, NVIDIA's Lovelace, although I suspect they will also be targeting very different uh, segments of the market with uh, Intel's offerings being significantly cheaper. And now we're going to switch to AMD because there's a couple of very interesting pieces of news for Zen 4. The first of which is we actually have confirmation that AMD are working on B650 motherboards. Now, this is not surprising, of course. These are basically mid-range motherboards. At the moment, we don't know what concessions they have. 
versus, you know, the full-fledged counterparts like the X670 or 690 or whatever they end up being called. But we can imagine that there will be some, you know, cuts. However, overall, they will probably still feature things like DDR5 memory, to my understanding. Ryzen 7000, of course, is not supporting DDR4. We're probably still going to have PCIe Gen 5, at least for the main, you know, uh, GPU slot and probably for the SSD and so on. So I suspect that these particular boards are still going to be very... Um, popular with a lot of enthusiasts. I'm actually using one of the Carbon uh, B550 motherboards for my uh, 5950X. And I have to say that it's really nice. Like the MSI board is quite nice. And funnily enough, they were using a Mag B650 here in these tests. Now you can see that the image is pretty small. Um, this was actually shared by 9550Pro on Twitter. I actually saw this yesterday after I finished the news video, so I kind of saw it a little bit late. But interesting thing, and a lot of folks have, you know, rightly raised their eyebrow at this, and that's the V-Core. So obviously different processors have different V-Core requirements, and yeah, 1.532 volts is kind of high. Now, it's imperative to realize that this is really early stuff, guys. Like, this is probably not going to be indicative of final BIOSes. And furthermore, this is not also retail silicon. So it's very possible that this is being overclocked or just tested and maybe they're trying to with this particular screenshot maybe they're trying to see how much voltage it takes for the cpu to brick because you know if you've ever gone into the bios of like an amd or an intel board and you're kind of cranking up the voltage you'll notice that it goes red at some point or another where it's like yeah you might not want to do that dude or do that um, if you go over a certain V core, it's going to just kind of go yellow and then red, depending if you've got an Asus or whatever board. And it's pretty much just saying that you're going to need really exotic cooling or you very much need to know what you're doing. Uh, it's just kind of like a nice visual indicator as well. If you happen to be trying to type in like 1.4 or something like that manually and you accidentally go to 1.7 if you've got butter fingers. Um, so it's very possible that they could be just be trying to figure out what the upper range is. Or it's just that they have crappy quality silicon because engineering samples are, well, a thing. And you clearly can see that the CPU is being listed as an AMD engineering sample. Unfortunately, we cannot see the core count here, which is kind of a pain. It's also possible that it's just something to do with the BIOS itself, even if this was a final production silicon piece, sorry, final production silicon, which it's not. But let's just assume for a second it was. BIOS is, you know, we've seen AMD themselves like kind of reduced V core over time with certain um, AM4 uh, BIOSes and platforms. So it's possible that that happened. I think it was even Zen 3 got reduced quite significantly. So it's possible that. And also, while we are on a 5NM process, so 1.5 volts does seem kind of high, we are also don't really know how the v-core affects the processors there are 170 watt tdp processors in the um ryzen 7000 lineup which i believe are 16 cores so i don't know it's going to be really interesting i wouldn't really be worried about this like is it going to be that the zen 4 processors are kind of hot possibly but at the end of the day i don't really care as long as they can be cooled down and it's like, yeah, I guess it's going to be a very interesting uh, set of experiments, I think, with Zen 4. I think Zen 4 is going to be a very interesting uh, platform for a lot of reasons. And um, I'm really interested to see what the marketing surrounding uh, the Ryzen 7000 series is versus what Intel do with their 13th generation. Because I suspect that we're going to see some switcherooing. I don't know if that's a word, but you get what I mean. Um, simply because Intel are probably going to have multi-core advantage in a lot of SKUs because of the uh, energy efficient cores and performance cores. And yeah, bottom line, it's going to be a really interesting generation. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. Leave a likey on the video. Apologies for no camera for today. I'm kind of having a lower work day today. 
uh, working on a couple of projects but yeah normal service shall resume over the next couple of days where I've got a couple of very interesting exclusives and just a reminder for those who have missed uh, my previous video I also have an interview coming up pretty soon with Neil Trevitt from the Kronos Group. I actually have already conducted the interview. It was really cool. We talk, talk about a whole bunch of things like image upscaling and, you know, the need to kind of, let's say, have a universal method of APIs and stuff. We talked about Unreal Engine, Vulkan, games consoles, tons of other stuff. So it's pretty cool, at least in my opinion. So check that out. It will be on the channel soon. With that said, thank you very much for watching the video. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.